Good evening. Welcome to uh, the Northampton City Council meeting of September 4th, 2014. Hope you all had a nice summer, and now it's time to get back to work. Uh, I'm City Council President. I'm presiding uh, tonight, Bill Dwight. That's the name that comes after that. Um, we're going to start before we convene, uh, with, as, our, as our custom, with uh, <coughs> public comment. Um, if you're interested in speaking, you can sign up here on the podium and we'll call your name. Actually, you can't sign up anymore. I got your list here, but it's okay. So, and the rules are please keep your comments to three minutes or under and um, state your name and address when you come up to the podium to speak. And actually, the one and only name I have right now is Claudia Lefko. Lefko, 40 Valley Street. I'm speaking in response to last night's zoning meeting and to the issues of how the time will be used both by the city government and by citizens between now and the end of the moratorium period, which I think is the end of December. What many of us in the Williams, Montview, Valley, Henry Street neighborhood are concerned about is that the zoning discussion and the resulting proposals seem to be disconnected from the reality on the ground. What did, does it already look like and feel like in this neighborhood? What is the existing infrastructure and what are the existing challenges for the people living there? So, on one side, the neighborhood is bordered by a dike which is out of compliance and in disrepair. Over the dike is the airport and the fairgrounds and then Bridge Street. On the other side is the meadows which brings in its own troubles to our neighborhood and we have the sewage plant. And on the fourth side is Pleasant Street, and at our end, it's a mix of business and bars. Within these borders, we have single family houses mixed with two and three family houses. We have renters and owners. We have condominiums, and we have, for a number of years, had a homeless encampment that the police say they treat like any other neighborhood in the city. That was the quote in the paper. It's not an occasional tent or someone sleeping under the stars. We have an unsightly infill project, City View, which landed us some traffic calming money and a public quote unquote right of way. This is by necessity maintained unhappily by the person living next to this right of way, not by the city or the condos. There is still unused money in our account with the traffic calming because the city has continuously disagreed with our own traffic calming committee about how the money should be spent. Also within our borders, we have the new Arts Trust building and we'll soon have a hotel. There are two big projects, Shaw's Motel and the Northampton Lumber Yard on the corner of Pleasant and Holly Streets. St. John Cantius, also on Holly Street, is up for sale. And we have very large lots on Henry Street, which can be developed more intensively under this new proposed zoning. As you can hear, and as you would see if you came to our neighborhood, we are a diverse neighborhood in every imaginable way. We're not against change, we're not afraid of new ideas, and we're not afraid of new people. We live in a unique urban rural neighborhood with a crumbling infrastructure of roads and sidewalks and a dike that is sorely in, dis in disrepair. Because of this, and because we feel the current proposals fail to take this into full consideration, we want more time to work with the city and with the planning department to develop zoning regulations that make sense for this unique corner of our city. So I am here to urge you to use all the time we have to not cut vote in September, but let the moratorium play out until the end of December. And I invite you to come to the neighborhood and walk around and see us for yourselves. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that is it for the sign up. If anyone else is interested, they're welcome to come up and speak. <coughs> anyone like to do that at this moment? Okay. I'm going to ask the secretary to call the roll, please. Here. Present. Here. Present. Here. 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 Excellent. All counted and present, and uh, we have a quorum, so we will convene. The uh, first up, we have some presentations, uh, two presentations, and first up is uh, Donna Bell Cassis. Do you want to be first? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just, I think that's how it broke out alphabetically or something. So. That's fine. That's great. Did you have a, a, have a PowerPoint, PowerPoint presentation? presentation? 
Okay. You have the floor. So I wanted to introduce myself again. My name is Donna Bell Cassis. I'm at 11 Country Way in Florence. Um, I'm a Florence artist and lead organizer for the Florence Night Out, which is a community celebration that celebrates creativity. And uh, this one, the next one is coming up on Friday, September 19th from 5.30 to 8.30. This will be the third iteration of this event. And so just to, I just wanted to talk briefly about what has happened over the last two events and what you can look forward to this fall in about 15 days. So this first slide um, is just a really quick overview of some of the highlights from last year. We had many artists, open studios, performances, um, live music. Uh, at the bottom there is WOFA from the PVPA uh, Charter School. Down at the left is an artist open studio giving a demonstration. Top left is um, a duo that did a video installation at 30 North Maple Street. And the top right is a musician playing outside of an art opening at Pivot Media. The next slide. Uh, so we jump over to May, which was the last one. The first one was September 26 and 2013. The next uh, following one was on May Day, May 1st of 2014, and here, the event extended beyond uh, just North Maple and Maple Street and part of Maine. It went all the way to Trinity Row Triangle. Um, here you see the Marlboro Morris men performing a maple dance on the green. Uh, there's our very own Elisa <laughs> at an art opening. She managed to sneak in really quickly before the next council meeting. Uh, this is Colorway, the band that performed at 30 North Maple Street. Uh, there was a surprise rehearsal by Young at Heart during the uh, event times, and uh, they also had an open house because they just opened their building, their office at uh, 28 North Maple Street. Uh, we, I was very um, excited to learn that we had a pedal cap company, which unfortunately has now since moved, but uh, we were able to use two of their pedal cabs to transport um, folks throughout downtown. Uh, one of the features that I like to do to sort of um, expose the artists and musicians to the community is that I coordinate with Valley Free Radio to provide live acoustic music sets and interviews. And here is uh, Steve Sanderson and Kay McKinstry of the Drunk Stunt Men performing on Valley Free Radio. Now we're talking about the fall. Fall's coming up. Um, again, the event is coming up on a Friday, September 19th from 5.30 to 8.30. And the new thing this time is that I am collaborating with Tony Gleason, who is a Florence resident and owner of DIY Mobile Box. And he has generously offered uh, six of his units to use as pop-up art installation spaces. So I will be putting those in downtown Florence in surprising locations. I like to think of it as sort of a mini mass mocha in that um, there will be these exhibits that we don't normally see in this area, such as performance art, video installation, sound installation, and um, film, short films, and they'll be dispersed throughout downtown, so it's a walking art tour. Um, so be prepared, you'll see some of those. One actually was delivered today at 30 North Maple, and you'll slowly see them coming in over the next two weeks. Um, I also have postcards for the event if you're interested. Um, again, just like the last two events, we have live music. We have a Rick Murnane Trio on the left and a Zydeco Connection on the right. Uh, before Zydeco Connection, Terry Anderson from the uh, Dance Northampton will be giving free Zydeco dance lessons at the VFW. Uh, this is a picture of Kelly Silliman of Tiny Dance Project. She will be performing on Main Street, taking, um, she's collaborating with another dancer and um, performing with their uh, stage that they transport with, the, with their bikes. And lastly, I just wanted to list a couple of the free, um, other things that are being offered at Florence Night Out. Everything is free and open to the public. Um, all the events are sponsored through local businesses and individuals. So Art Always, which is in the Arts and Industry Building, will be offering a, a free craft table for children. 
um, wine and canvas, uh, which is a new sort of sensation where you go to a restaurant and and paint with your friends. Um, they are actually offering free painting sessions at the Florence Arts and Business Building um, at 140 Pine Street without the wine, <laughs> just the canvas that evening. Um, Family Fun Magazine will be offering some fun games and activities on Main Street near Goggins Realty. Uh, again, Terry Anderson will be giving Zydeco dance lessons at the VFW. Um, the Northampton High School Improv Troupe will be performing at Cup and Top. There'll be bike demos by two companies this year, Electric Ride, which uh, rents out electric bicycles. They're at 30 North Maple. They'll be demoing up and down the bike path. And Full Circle Bike Shop will be having a bike demo at the Florence Dental parking lot. Um, there'll also be a full movie screening at Full Circle Bike Shop after all the events are finished. Um, Cooper's Corner will be offering a beer and wine tasting. First Church will be offering free refreshments at the Fine Arts Building at 140, or I'm sorry, the Florence Arts and Business Center at 140 Pine Street. And Friendlies will be offering free happy ending Sundays for, uh, with every meal that day. There's one more slide. At least you have a friendlies. <laughs> we still have the friendlies, right. So if you're interested in the event and any other information, you can go to the website at www.florencenightout.com. And again, it's Friday, September 19th from 5.30 to 8.30. Does anyone have any questions? That's pretty comprehensive. Uh, Council LaBarge. Yes, thank you. I want to thank you very, very much. Um, it was an honor to have you come to Social Services, Veterans, Culture, and Recreation. First time I had met you through our counselor from Ward 7, Alyssa Klein. I am so happy to see that it's going to be on a Friday. Thank you. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank you so much. I enjoyed doing it. So if you can, please stop by and enjoy. And by the way, there's press releases available on this, uh, on the chair next to the press, oddly enough, from one of the press, for press and Friday. Maybe you can share it with other members. <laughs> Absolutely. And I have postcards as well for the event, which has all the information on it, too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next up, Tom Pease. Hello again. Good evening, counselors. Bill. My name is Tom Pease. I live, I live at 130 Spring Street in Florence, and I'm the former owner of 1812 Paint and Body. My son's now own that. And uh, we live directly across the street from the Florence Fields. This year, I am uh, putting together uh, another concert on a fun day at the Look Park Heinz Theater. It's going to be called the Third Annual Salute to Summer. And this year, I'm putting my efforts forward to benefit the Florence Fields and the Northampton Recreation Department. Um, couple of reasons. Three years ago, thereabouts, this council and the former council members got together in the city and decided to buy the old farm fields, um, well, almost 140 acres, right across from our property. We own 600 feet of frontage on Spring Street, and we face that property. So after a lot of hemming and hawing with the family, we decided to let things kind of pan out. There were a lot of pros and cons about these fields. Uh, we're the, the biggest of butter. We never said anything. We just kind of more or less stood on a fence and sat on a fence, and we really did because we watched everything unfold. Um, up until the middle of last year, I wasn't really too sure how it was going to turn out. Uh, they had excavators over there, people measuring things, and, and uh, surveyors. They were moving piles of dirt from here to there and sifting sand and rocks. and. I couldn't figure out for the life of me what was really going, what was going to turn out to be. I mean, they moved more dirt. They never hauled anything in. They just moved dirt. And then, the middle of last summer, it started to hit me. It was looking pretty good. I said, "This is this is this is great." I said, "I got to do something. I want to do something." And the reason I want to do something is, 23 years ago, my wife and I lost a son. I'm sure, Marianne, you remember, 1991. And my family, myself, my wife, it's, it's been tough. It took 20 years. We never get through it. I never get over it. We lost a son. Last summer, it made me more aware of children. Children in this community 
is probably the best asset, the best future we have, our children and our young adults. And it means a lot to me to put this concert together and have this fun day and raise some money for the Northampton Recreation Department. It means a lot to me and my family because children are so precious. Dave, what you and the City Council did and the members, whoever was behind the scenes in the Northampton Rec Department and Marie, you've got the, one of the finest pieces of property I've ever seen. That right now I would consider the centerpiece of Florence and eventually it's going to be the centerpiece of Northampton. The soccer fields, the baseball fields, the little football field, the walking path, the bike path, it is absolutely beautiful. And I can't thank all of you enough for doing this and awakening something in me and my family so we can move forward and do something back for the community. We're sponsoring this deal. I want to get the community together this Saturday afternoon. I want people to get involved. I want them to, I want them to go down on Spring Street and, 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 and Meadow Street and look at it. It's absolutely beautiful. And there were a lot of pros and cons. I mean, a lot of people come to me and said, Tom, do you know how much money they spent? Why don't you come down now and take a look at it and see the safe haven we have for the children. It's a safe place for our kids to go to, our young adults and their parents. It's something to do. It's going to get them maybe off the couch, whatever, but I cannot wait until next spring till it really, really gets going. Kudos to the Northampton Recreation Department, Anne Marie. I'm telling you, this, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. So that being said, the concert is going to take place at 5 o'clock this Saturday afternoon. From 3 to 6 during the afternoon, we're providing free face painting for the kids. They come over. They're going to have a balloon twister there. We're going to have a clown. Uh, if you show a concert ticket, you can get on a train and ride the train all afternoon at the Look Park Pines Theater. $20 per person to get in at 5 o'clock. Children under 12 are going to be free. Oh, the VFW, which I'm the commander of now, is going to be there cooking the food, hamburgers, hot dogs, some coleslaw, whatever. Um, Look Park is going to have adult beverages, and we'll have soft drinks, of course. Um, the Northampton Recreation Department has been gracious enough to give me some volunteers because I'm going to need them. Um, this event is going to be rain or shine. I rented the biggest tent I possibly could because I know New England. And all the kids' affairs, everything they're going to be doing is going to be undercover. Uh, the three bands, we're going to have uh, music from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, live performances by Union Jack, Joe Pucci with some surf music, and my favorites, the Bronx Wanderers. They're coming out of New York, and they just got through playing in Vegas, so I think everyone has a little something for them to enjoy. But it's, it's not even about the entertainment. To me, it's about community. To me, it's about the children and the adults knowing what they have, what we have now. It's uh, absolutely, absolutely pristine. And as a commander of the VFW, you have got my solemn word because we not only take care of veterans and veterans' families, it's our mission to take care of the community, children especially and youth sports you got my word we're hundred percent behind this and if any team needs any financial support they come and see me or one of my associates Anne Marie any anyone ever ever needs any help the VFW is going to be there like we were before you've got my word on that okay so that being said do you have any questions council the bark thank you Tom, I want to thank you and your family for everything that you have done in this city, for the veterans and also for the recreation department. And I agree with you. I heard the same thing as the counselor. Look at the money that you have wasted on something that could go somewhere else. I agree with you. If you build, they will come and they will come because I think it's one of the best that we have ever done in this city for our families, for our youths, who are very, very precious. And I want to thank you and your family. Uh, Councilor Carney. Th yes. Thank you as well. But my quick question, and you may have already said this, and maybe for people listening at home, how would folks purchase the tickets? Just uh, at they the can door? Purchase them online right now uh, through PayPal. You can go to salute number two 
summer.com. If tickets, the recreation department has tickets, you can buy tickets the day of. We're going to open up the ticket office at 3 o'clock. They're right at the Pine Street. Okay. Okay, but you can get on get on PayPal now, or you can call the VFW at 584-8006 or our, our shop if you want. But um, they will be available day of. And again, it's rain or shine. I know New England, and I've seen the forecast, and we've I've got the biggest tent I could possibly rent. So, and all the kids' affairs, everything they're doing is going to be undercover. So, it's, I hope to see many of you out there, and most of the community. It's going to be for a good cause. And one added note. Uh, Marianne, you remember when I did the veterans thing, the veterans tour? You know, that was the first thing. That was about 20 years after the passing of our son. And I finally got out of the shell, you know, and I got out in the public eye a little bit. And thanks to you, you helped me so much that this darn volunteering bug, I can't shake it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tom. I, I, your, uh, your, your commitment and devotion to the community is a testament. And I, um, I'm very grateful for it. So you thanks. Seen uh, last to me. No, I, I'm <laughs> counting on that. I did. I got him out of the shell. Um, that's it for presentations. We don't have any public hearings scheduled tonight. Um, we come up to uh, the communications from the mayor. The mayor, do you have anything to impart? No? Nothing to share? Uh, one minute announcements. Councilors with one minute announcements. Councilor Adams? Happy to announce that this Saturday. Um, September 6th is going to be the fourth annual Northampton Jazz Festival. This is downtown behind Thorns. It's free and open to the public. Um, it's going to be rain or shine. And it's going from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. all day. And there's going to be music, food, all sorts of events. There's going to be a 12-mile meal competition. That's a local um, chef meal competition hosted by the legendary Rick Gifford. And uh, <coughs> this year we have a, a spectacular lineup including, but not limited to, Flavor Evolution, the Steve Davis Quintet, and the great ATN Charles. I hope everyone can make it. Thank you. Say the date and time again, please. Sure. That's 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. This Saturday. Thank you. Lots of opportunities things to do this weekend. That's excellent. Uh, any other one-minute yes. announcements? Uh, Councilor Klein, then Councilor Labarge. Um, I wanted to announce that the Committee on Social Services, Veterans, Culture, and Recreation um, is holding two public hearings on the resolution on vibrant sidewalks. Um, we're hoping that there will be good turnout from the public. The first hearing is going to be on Monday, September 15th from 5 to 6.30 here in Council Chambers. Um, and the second public hearing is going to be focused on Florence and downtown Florence on October 14th, and that's at the Florence Civic Center from 7 to 8.30 p.m. And, and folks will recall that the controversial sidewalk resolution was actually tabled until such time that public forums could be conducted and where the community could be discussing what it means to have a public space. And is the opportunity to speak to that? And thank you for organizing that. Council LaBarge. Um, I just want to, as a city councilor, I went out two weeks ago and talked with many residents on Sylvester Road. I want to thank the Board of Public Works, Ned Huntley, Richard Pasoletti, and I think Doug was with us. And this meeting was held July 17th of last year. And it was on the deplorable conditions of Sylvester Road. Um, we had quite a bit of resonance there. Our new counselor from Ward 7 at that point could not come because she had something else booked. But anyways, it is going to happen. Um, I had emailed Ned Huntley in regards to exactly what would be happening with Sylvester Road with the new construction of it. And um, the initial work of the setting of the construction will be happening from September to mid-October. We also, we have house numbers of what is going to be done near the, and what type of work would strain water drainage work. There's gonna be a tremendous amount of work occurring out there. Talking to many residents for three days on Sylvester Road, on a Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, Turkey Hill Road and West Farms Road, they are so happy that the Board of Public Works and this hearing that we had with the Board of Public Works really was a lifesaver for everybody. It is a, a blessing that this is being done. 
We have waited such a long, long time, and I want to thank the Board of Public Works, especially Ned Huntley and Richard Pasoletti, for being there and listening to the great concerns of how dangerous that road was. So thank you. Any other one in the notes? Okay. Um, next up, um, licenses, licenses and petitions. And we have two uh, applications, secondhand dealer license, one for James B. Crocker, 48 Graves Avenue, Northampton, for Modern Myths, Incorporated, 34 Bridge Street, number four. Accept the motion. Move to approve. Second. Second. Uh, discussion on the application? Um, I don't think the applicants are here. Uh, <coughs> all those in favor of the application, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, that passes. Uh, next up is a secondhand dealer's license for John Malakowski of One Acorn Drive in Holyoke, Massachusetts, for Ryan's Jewelers on 14 Strong Avenue. Move to approve. Motions made. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on this application? All those in favor of approving the application, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? That application, those applications are both approved. Next up, uh, I'd accept a motion to approve the minutes of August 14, 2014. Motion approved. Second. Any discussion on the minutes? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Um, Next up, we have the meeting minutes for Transportation and Parking Commission of uh, uh, July 15. Can we take June 15. Um, I'm going to ask that the Board of Public Works one be separated for, and I'll explain in a second. But, um, but if you want to take all the others for appointments to committees, yes. Housing Partnership, Arts Council, yes. Uh, and re okay. It's, so, the, actually, I'm sorry, just those minutes for the uh, Transportation TPC. And the rest of the so I'm yes. leaving Move jumping the gun. So the motion is to accept the minutes and it's been seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Say no if you oppose. Any abstentions? Okay. Now next up is the Board of Public Works. And um, this is there were two non recommendations relative to uh, streets, one on Park Avenue and one uh, of Paquette Avenue. And we have Ned Huntley and Terry Culling here actually to speak to the larger issue of the street acceptance, the street acceptances, some of which we'll be addressing in a second reading later. But I, rather than have them stay for the whole meeting, I was hoping the council would be uh, kind enough to recognize them now so that they can discuss this. I move to recognize them. Um, first, I would ask for a motion to put, uh, to, for, to approve these two um, so moved. petitions that are referred. Second it. Uh, and so all those in favor of recognizing Terry Culhane and, and Ned Huntley, please say aye. 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 Okay, gentlemen. Uh, good evening. Good evening. <laughs> so actually, Terry, you were, I, I think you guys are going to catch us up here. Um, and it, we, we did do a first reading on some street acceptances already. We have a second reading queued up for later, which we are, as I said, not going to require you to be here for. But, of course, during the course of that, as per usual, there were some, some questions that came up about the process. And as you said, your process is kind of a fluid process as you adapted um, to circumstances and petitions and appeals. And if you could just update us on that, that would probably be very helpful. Well, obviously, there's been a number of questions about a couple of the streets that we did not recommend. And the questions particularly were on what criteria we accepted or what criteria we use to either recommend that a street be accepted or withhold our recommendation. Uh, the criteria were not absolute. We knew going into this that some streets look exactly like a city street and would be completely non-controversial. Other streets literally were driveways. But there's a large group in the middle where we needed, we felt we needed some flexibility to decide on a case-by-case -case basis. In fact, as we worked our way through these some 40, approximately 40 streets, some of these intermediate streets that we were a little dubious about, it turned out back in the 60s, there is a record the city council had accepted those streets. 
and at that time directed the city engineer to prepare all of the necessary paperwork, but there was no evidence that that paperwork was ever completed and the process finalized. We felt we had to honor the city council's intent back in the 60s, so some of these streets where there was that record, as I say, we were somewhat askance about those streets, but felt that the city council's will had been expressed. We accepted them, and then in turn, we accepted some others that were virtually indistinguishable. Uh, in terms of criteria, we were looking at does a street meet reasonably current design standards? Is there room sufficient width for two-way traffic? Um, is it a dirt road or a paved road? Is it conducive to plowing? Is there a turnaround at the end for the snow plow if it's a dead end street? Is there room to um, push the snow aside? Is there somewhere to push it towards, somewhere to store the snow? Uh, is it a through street? Is it actively used by non-residents? Uh, some general factors. Is it, is it, uh, does it have some other value to the city? Uh, are there utilities below the road? Do we have proper easements for those utilities? In some cases, we accepted streets because those utilities are not only below the road, but we needed to upgrade those utilities. For example, there's a road that connects to the industrial park where we needed to do some major work, all of which was simplified by simply accepting that street so we could work on it. So th those were the, na that's the nature of the things that we looked at. One thing that we never really set aside as one of our criteria was, is there a definable street and is there an opportunity for off-street parking? So if there's a snow emergency, is it clear what's the street and do the people who live on that street have a, an opportunity to get off of the street? Center Court, I know has been somewhat controversial, it's an example of an amorphous parking lot we, we have gone back multiple times. I know uh, you've gone back. It's difficult to see what would be the street and how a car could conceivably be off of the street in order for plowing. Uh, another one like that is a Park Avenue um, in that neighborhood between King Street and State Street. Again, it's kind of a parking lot with a little driveway going into it. So we had some trouble with streets like that. Another one was Paquette Avenue which is down by the Smith College power plant. And this is a case of a street that was entirely owned by one person. There are houses on both sides of the street. It's true there's a street going in, but the entire large parcel is owned by one person. And in that case, the Board of Public Works struggled to see this, to construe this as a public street. It's really a, a parking lot going to the apartments that this person owns. So that's the nature, briefly, of the types of criteria we tried to apply and three examples of streets where we struggled to find a way to recommend that this is a public street. One of the things that struck me when you are speaking is you said that you accepted a street by Industrial Drive to do maintenance on it because it was in need of, of, of work. Did you say that? You know where um, Com the Comcast office was? Yeah. Bradford Terrace. Yeah. Right, yeah. But were there were there other reasons why it, it, it was it, it was a, taken? It was a street. You know, it, it, it wasn't. It didn't jump out as a classic city street, but it was acceptable, and and we were, we're running a sewer intercept right down that whole street, going to the pumping station next to the bike path. We need to do some major work on that street. It wasn't maintenance. We were really going to put in a major right. Would it be possible to do it, to, to do it, if, it were, if it were not taken as a public street? It would have involved, I believe, um, going to each of the residents, getting permission. It, it was on the list for potential acceptance. It was a reasonable street to accept, and it certainly made it a lot easier to plan the infrastructure work we had in mind. To what extent is this set of criteria um, for the convenience of maintenance, for the convenience of the, of, the, of the Department of Public Works? Almost not at all. I mean, because at one point you were saying that if, if, a, if, they, if, a, if, if vehicles could back out of it easily, that seemed to me to be. No, if there, is there room for two-way traffic? No, oh, oh, in terms no. of the plow? Right. Yes. We, we, we were looking for 
is it practical to plow this street? I mean, we've been doing it, but we were, we were just looking at what sorts of criteria we could use to evaluate whether or not to recommend that your, your group accept a street. Because my concern is if it's overly fluid, it's almost whimsical. And, and, and I, know it's, I know it's a difficult task. I know, no one's in, I know that's probably not the intent. But, you know, if you're going to take one street because it needs some work at some point in the future and the city wants to do it, mm -hmm. it's, that sounds borderline whimsical to me. That's concerning. Well, I think in this instance, it didn't sound to me like you wanted to do work on the street. You needed to do work under the street. Yes. So your interest in that street was not, gee, we really want to repave the street, but really we got to run a big sewer interceptor down the middle, down the middle of it, and it's our street. We don't have any problem doing that. So it was more conveniencing you by running a sewer interceptor in the street than actually saying, oh, we just have this desire to repave this street out of all the other streets in the city. It was, we put uh, substantial amounts of money into that pump station by the bike path, and the, the final piece of that puzzle was a brand new interceptor from the industrial park. Um, this street was on our list. It was not an implausible street. It was not a strong candidate, but it was a reasonable candidate and we needed to do some work. So in fact, we moved that through. That's been moved through so we could get on with the construction process. I, I hope that doesn't seem, I mean, it didn't feel whimsical. It seemed like a nice marriage of we had some needs, they had some desires. Uh, was, was that street candidate. at one point recommended for non-acceptance? No. There's Because wasn't there one over there that was? It's, a, it's, it's three sections of street. There's a, a north-south, there's an angle going over to the industrial park, and then there's a little spur down here parallel to the bike path. That spur is so narrow that when we drove in to take a look at it, we had to play backing out, let it, letting people. It's not why It's a driveway. It's a very nice driveway because the city at one point paved it. But we had uh, misgivings about that Bradford extension. Redford Street South. We had some misgivings about it, but in the end, we accepted it. Council, we're done. Um, so, uh, Mr. Cohen, I'm just wondering, you have different categories that you're trying to look at when you're making these assessments, and I'm wondering, within those categories, are there degrees of how much they meet them? So, for example, parking and plowing. One street where there's not a lot of off-street parking, and one street that's very hard to plow is Graves Avenue. In fact, the snow is, is generally pushed into, uh, well, until recently anyway, um, into a, a private parking lot at the end, as you know. So when you look at a street that doesn't seem to have sufficient parking, do you say, well, it has some parking and therefore it's okay, or this, this street has absolutely no way to, to park anywhere off street? Um, and is there a give and take at all? Because it seems there some flexibility is, it would seem to be necessary, you know. Some streets are just harder to plow than others, and some streets have more off-street parking than others. Um, so I guess my question is, how much did that flex? How much? How much do streets vary in within the categories that you're trying to meet? I think most of the streets that we're wherein we recommend that, that you accept them have distinct off-street parking. Um, some of the people on Graves Avenue might have to look, they might have to go to the public parking lots uh, during a snow emergency. Okay. What was your criteria that every single car that would normally be on a street must have a place to be off the street or just kind of a majority of the cars? Well, let me turn that around if I may. All of the streets have to be, all the cars have to be off of the street. Right. But they don't necessarily have to be behind the buildings on the street. They could find nearby places to park, as long as there was a reasonable place for them to go. Yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's yeah, interesting. I might, be, I might be splitting hairs. I was just kind of curious about, the, about that process. Um, well, it's a good point. I, I take your point. You're, so you're saying there, there must be situations where there isn't off-street parking for every possible car that may be associated with the people who live on that street. I'm glad you identified my point for me. Well, I, is, I, I think that's, that's what I hear you're saying. Hear that I had a point. Um, yeah, I, I think that, that is what I'm saying. And also certain streets, 
uh, would deal with that requirement different than others. So a downtown street, for example, there might be a, a lot you could go to, whereas right. a street that you know is not downtown, you wouldn't have that luxury. And so, anyway, I guess this is something that you've you've weighed when you. <laughs> Thus far, the Board of Public Works has not um, found a way to get to. Uh, Recommending that you accept some those two streets I mentioned that sure feel like a parking lot. Okay, uh, Councilor Specter and then Councilor Clark. Yeah, I want to I want to thank you first of all for all the work you put in this, and I've been kind of with you on the sidelines watching this for a number of years. I, I wish there was kind of a, a clearer kind of more science to be able to do this, but I think from day one and. I watched and I actually pushed you to make some changes on some streets. I think part of this was, you know, there was kind of the art of doing it and the science, as you just heard Terry say, kind of a feeling about the street. That may not be something that you can quantify, but it's something that it wasn't just Terry's feeling, it was, it was the group's feeling. As I said last week, I think you also erred on the side of making the street a public street. That was kind of, I watched that process going on saying, look, we're, we're going to kind of extend our initial criteria and allow streets that initially didn't fit into the criteria and give some leeway. And again, using that kind of, well, it feels like a street. It's not just a driveway. So I kind of, I hear your question and I, I've watched them struggle with it, but I think there isn't just that sheet of how many people, how many cars, you know. I think some of this had to be just judgment calls from a group of people. And I watched them kind of having long discussions about each of these streets, especially the ones, the ones that were kind of at that border. You know, they had long and difficult discussions. It's just a sort of long line. I don't know what art is. But <laughs> yeah, that, that line. I, I don't think that was quite the right quote, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I also want to say thank you. I know that this has been a really hard process, and I also I, I acknowledge uh, what you're saying, Councillor Specter. But I want to follow up on one of the points, and I know that Center Court has been problematic and controversial. What I'm curious about is why there wasn't some kind of criteria that had to do with how it serves the downtown business community. Center Court, I think, really falls into that category. I think the parking on Center Court has to do with daytime visitors to the over 30 therapists, I think, that have offices there. Um, so that in terms of snow plowing, they're not going to be there during the times plows are coming necessarily, or they could go to, as you um, spoke about Graves Avenue, they could go to a downtown parking lot. Um, so. Again, I'm just, I'm kind of, I just want to hear a little bit more about the criteria specifically with regard to center court, um, especially because that, that part of it's, I mean, it's really a, a, a vibrant part of downtown Northampton. I, I would readily acknowledge that. It's something we've struggled with. We've gone there multiple <laughs> times looking for a way to say yes. There's some other issues with that property in there. There's some drainage issues. It's, the utilities are funky. Uh, it's got a, in fact, I was pressing the department at one time to come up with under what criteria could we get to yes. If they fix the drainage, would that do it? If they, and we've struggled to come up with something that, that feels like, okay, that would be enough. Um, that would be sufficient to garner our support. It's, it's been a struggle. Ultimately, we are merely recommending. My understanding is that you could decide on your own to just accept it. Uh, as the city solicitor has explained the process to me, the Board of Public Works reviews the street. Uh, we, ha we hold a public hearing. If the board feels that this street is worthy of our, our recommendation to you that you accept the street, then we are to prepare all the paperwork, do the legal work, and present you with a package for your final decision. But my understanding is you can make that decision without our concurrence and direct us in the other direction to prepare all the necessary paper paperwork, not unlike what happened back in the 60s. Right. And we would follow through and prepare the and, and in point of fact, this is a, uh, as with all committees that are referred, they are making their recommendations or their absence of recommendations, disrecommendation, if you will, 
and so uh, Council Labar doesn't spoken yet, and then Council Murphy. If I could just say one quick lesson. So you mentioned the the contribution that Center Court makes to the downtown, and the it, it's kind of that slides over into a political decision, which I think is appropriately before you people. We were doing our best to make it sort of a technical decision. So I'm not sure that that one point is something that was ours to to weigh. Council LaBarge and then Thank Council you. Murphy. We've been going through this for a long, long time. Yes. A long time. I have to agree with some of the points that Councilor Spector brought forth. I look at it, you're the professionals, you're the engineers, you go out and you have these public hearings. The engineers are the ones who state what needs to be done, what's acceptable, and what is not. Correct? Yes. Correct. What I'd like to know, if these streets are accepted, what is that extra cost to the city? How much money would be involved? I'm hearing about stormwater drainage, so forth. There's drainage problems, new pipes going in. What would be the added cost if we accepted the streets? So just if I can clarify your question, are you talking about all of these streets? No. The just the specific? Yes. The incremental cost of adding a couple of streets would be okay. nothing. It'd be a rounding error. It's hundreds, a thousand dollar. You know, it's well, that's money. Yeah. It's also an assumption of liability. Yes. It's an assumption of responsibility too. So I mean, there's there's not just a fiduciary uh, cost associated with, but there's a lot of things that go with. Right. So. Once you've had those hearings, you then bring that information back to the board, correct? Yeah, well, actually, the board members go to the hearing. They go to the hearing. All right. How many engineers from the department are actually there who are making that determination? I think the public needs to hear this. Generally, they're the city engineer and the director of public works um, are both at the meetings, as well as uh, the majority of the board members. Uh, we hold the hearing, we, we send out registered letters, and we've had hearings at all of these streets, in some cases twice. Um, Thank you, Chair. Okay. Councilor Murphy, then Councilor Carney. Well, I'm going to jump the gun on the thank yous and thank you for all the work you've done, because I know in some instances you've done these streets twice, because you, you went around and did them once, and then <laughs> the criteria shifted a little, so you went back and did them all over again. And so I appreciate all the work you've put into it. Um, just one protocol thing. I mean, we, we asked them to go look into this, and they're reporting back to us in some cases to accept, and in some cases they don't recommend it. And I'd like us relative to Park Avenue and Paquette, rather than approve, just accept their recommendation. Um, and, and the reason for that is when we get all done with this process, and Terry has alluded to this, we could get all done with this process, and we could have six streets or I don't know what the number, I'm just picking six. We could have six orphans left over that didn't make the cut that they're not going to recommend. And I'm pretty sure we're going to hear from these people and they're going to come to us and say, well, what kind of an abatement do I get from the city off my taxes for the fact that you just, you just booted my street off the list that you're going to take care of? At which point, as Terry said, we might determine, you know, rather than go down that road, it's six streets, the cost is minimal. Let's just take them anyways. I mean, we can't really determine that now because we don't know how many there's going to be until all is said and done. But Terry's right. That's a political decision that we need to make to deal with whatever the leftover problem is once we're done taking all the ones that they've already done the work on. And I agree with their process because, frankly, winter is a coming, and I want to get as many of them done as we can so that those residents don't have to worry about are they going to care for my street or not. But sooner or later, it's going to get kicked back to this body to deal with however many are left. And hopefully it's a relatively small number. But then their work is kind of done, and Terry's right. At that point, we've got to politically decide, you know, how are we going to deal with the grievance that these people have with the city? And, you know, is that to give them some sort of tax relief, or is that to just say, hell, that we're going to take all these streets if they're not really big and deal with it that way? So I'd like to see us just accept the report now, because who knows where we're going to go with this when all is said and done. Right. And in order to process, actually, the non-recommendations are not petitions that will come before us. So, in fact, it's, it's, it's 
we are only voting in the affirmative yeah. or to reject, actually. Yeah. You, that option also oh. exists as some of the recommendations you're making. To mm -hmm. And in this instance, I don't want to say accept or reject, but we do have to tell them, since they reported back, that we accept their report. Thank you. We right. accepted your report on these two streets. But that it, I'm sure it's not over for us. It may be over for them now, but it's not over for us. Because I bet whatever, whatever streets we orphan in this process, you know, they may not hear from them, but we're going to hear from them in round two. Uh, Councilor Carney. Thank you. Um, very good points, Councilor. Actually, I'm, I'm kind of swayed by those. And I really appreciate all the work um, that you folks have uh, put into this meeting. I know we met on my street very early in the morning. And we're talking a bunch of volunteers who are going out every single weekend for a couple of years. I don't know, a long time. So it felt like, felt like a lot of work. So I really appreciate all that work, while at the same time, I've always expressed my discomfort with the whole notion that um, many residents who lived on streets that were considered private ways unbeknownst to them were receiving city services for decades you know in some cases for generations and now because of you know this lawsuit that happened back east and this whatever reason we're being evaluated as to whether or not those services could continue so all along i mean I've, i think i've made it clear that my inclination is especially since the costs are seemingly uh, negligible. And even if they weren't, I mean, I just felt as though, just as a matter of principle, that um, we ought not to kind of pull the, pull the rug out from underneath folks who had for, as I said, many decades. And that that has a significant impact on the value, property value of their homes. So then were we to do that, there would be other things that we would be required I believe, you know, morally, our, our obligation would be to somehow make folks whole. So anyway, uh, that being said, I can go along with the notion of accepting a report and the responsibility of the political decision that we'll need to make. And if that is an option in, in, or written in such a way that it's known that what we accept is the recommendation of the board with the understanding that we'll then be the ultimate deciders <laughs> come whenever that is for the streets. Um, I'm comfortable with that. And just to clarify for everyone who's following along, um, we are only going to be voting on the ones that come with recommendations. Right, right. Those are the only ones that we'll be addressing for now. And then in time, there will be opportunities for citizens who feel differently that their streets have, as Council Murphy phrased it, orphaned, to <laughs> petition the council. And as Terry also correctly assessed it, was that that, that therein becomes a political discussion about mm -hmm. what is taxation, what mm -hmm. is, how, how do we do taxation, how do we provide services, what's a street, what's not a street, what's a parking lot, and so on and so forth. Those debates, I look forward to those in the coming months. Uh, Councilor Specter. I, I just, I know we'll get to debate this. I just want to plant this seed in the Councilor's mind when they debate it. One of the things that came up continuously as we tried to punt this somewhere years ago, none of us wanted to deal with it. We totally understand, I think each of us in our ward understands somebody living on a street and suddenly having, being told, you're not gonna get the services, it wasn't really a public street. There were a few cases where you have a long driveway with, you know, we had a couple of those. So there were some that were stark cases of somebody knew somebody a long time ago and they got this ball rolling, you know, knew some counselor or somebody and they just decided to do a street. With that said, one of the other concerns once this lawsuit, which we had nothing to do with it came through in this hearing, one of the things we also have to recognize is why should we be doing a street Yes, it's been done for a while. That is kind of like a parking lot. When we have a number of developments here in the city, we have a couple of co-housing projects who could certainly, and I heard this, why isn't the city, this is definitely a street. If you look at kind of, uh, I think it's Laurel, Laurel, um, Mountain Laurel Road, that's a long street, beautiful wide street. So we're gonna also have to be looking at that, that there are a number of places that we have not approved as public streets for, you know, for whatever criteria we have. And if I were on those streets, I'd say, well, why are you doing this driveway for somebody just because you've done it forever? And we're gonna come and say, we want you to do our street. So, and I know, because I heard when I was um, working with this on the committee, I heard from people in a number of places when they heard about this saying, you know, why aren't you doing our street? So. 
and sure. in some cases we actually dictated to them to what standards they had to build those streets. That's right. They were in fact built to the city standards. Um, any other questions or comments at this point about the process and uh, the, and in fact actually what we're going to be voting on is just to accept their recommendation or lack of recommendation. But yeah. is there any and if I it may just briefly say there in total about 36 streets that we have voted to recommend that you accept these streets. Um, virtually all of them with the, with the exception of a small handful, uh, three or four, are now have now moved through the survey process and are at the city solicitors. Uh, and those ones that haven't moved through the surveying process are only over minor details. For example, once one little street has a, a little turnaround at the end. And we're just debating, should, should we make it look like a thermometer? Or should we, you know, j detail types of things for these two or three streets that have not yet been fully surveyed? Uh, the city solicitor has told me that he anticipates by November um, his work will be complete. And at that point, they'll all be, have been presented to you. And Ned, do you have anything you want to add? You've been you quite well. Thank you covered you. his back <laughs> pretty well. Okay. Uh, any other questions or comments? Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Oh, uh, Councilor. Paulette. Paul Kent. What's that? What about Paul Kent? Do you want, do you want to speak to Paul Kent? Yeah. Uh, Paul Kent is that property that is wholly owned by one. It's a trust. Oh, yeah, you spoke about it? Thank you. Yeah. So the, it's the apartments are owned by one property owner Price on, on all, the, essentially the driveway to access the, the, that owner's development. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your time. Um, so now. Uh, motion to accept. Well, the motion has been accepted. Oh, it has uh, been made. Okay. So to, uh, to accept the non recommendations, uh, any further discussion today? All those in favor of accepting these recommendations, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Any abstentions? All right. Thank you. Now, next up, we have some appointments to committees. Uh, first up, the Housing Partnership. Uh, new appointment uh, in Tia Izaza Figueroa. Whoops. My computer just went out. 44 State Street. Uh, this is a term starting uh, September this month, 2014, to expire August 2015. The membership begins immediately to fill the vacancy left by the retirement of Lauren Boyer. Uh, I'll accept the motion to refer. Move to refer to rules, orders, appointments, and ordinances. Second. 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 Any discussion? All those in favor of the referral, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Next up, new appointments <coughs> to um, the Arts Council. We have Jonah Zuckerman of 82 Jackson Street. This is term October 2014 to October 2017 and that's the to fill the vacancy left by David Kuter. Uh that's also for referral Herbert E. Ross of 39 Service Center um, term is October 2014 to October 2017 that's to fill the vacancy left by Joan Axelrod Contrada <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, John Paul uh, Matinsky of 44 Liberty Street. Uh, the uh, term is October 2014 to October 2017. That's filled with vacancy left by Carl Rousseau. And those are all referrals. I'll accept a motion. Move to um, refer to Committee on Rules, Order, Support, Appointments, and Ordinance. Second. Uh, any discussion on the referrals? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? And then last is a uh, reappointment for Ellen Garden of uh, 253 Crescent Street, and that term is August 2014 to August 2017. This is also a referral. Uh, I'll accept the motion for referral for the reappointment. To refer to so so rules, orders, so, uh, and appointments, and ordinances. A, a question? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, I'm not sure. I, I guess I've slips my mind here. Um, if this is a reappointment, was this the opinion of the solicitor that even a reappointment of someone who'd served for nine years still ne needs yep. to go to? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, try to make that clear right. to the yeah. former chair and longtime, long-serving member of that arts council. Right. It's, it's also it's all, it's it's also a council rule. Yep. Yes, that it's a council rule and charter obligation. Mm -hmm. She'll have to come to the. Yep. Appointment. So uh, the motion is to refer. No, no. She, she doesn't have to go. To oh no! That we need to. We need to take it up. You don't have to take it up. We need to take it up. Uh, so the motion is to refer. Any further discussion or questions? 
All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Um, Congress Becker and Council Chair. Well, simultaneously second. You flip a coin, pick which one. Um, that's it for appointments. Um, next up is uh, recess for finance, and uh, I pass the gavel to Council Murphy, who is the chair of finance. And once Pam's ready, we'll call the roll. <laughs> we only have three items, so we'll get going. Have everything ready to go. I'm here. Here. Present. Here. Um, three items tonight. The first is upon the recommendation of the mayor. Whereas City Council appropriated eighty-five thousand dollars for the replacement of fire escapes at the Academy of Music as part of the FY14 capital plan, and whereas the City Council appropriated additional $117,200 from free cash on May 15th, 2014 for replacement of the fire escapes at the Academy of Music in order to fully fund the project once bids were received for a total project cost of $202,200. And whereas additional funds are necessary to provide for limited containment of lead paint on components that are being removed. And whereas there remains $34,522.67 remaining in unallocated cash capital funds from FY14's capital plan, ordered that $12,305 be appropriated from unallocated funds remaining in the FY14 cash capital program to the Academy of Music Fire Escape Renovation Account. And we have the mayor here to speak to this. And I also have Mr. Pomerantz here who's been overseeing the project and he, I, I would ask him to speak to this one as well as if, if you um, move through these three orders if you wanted to take number three second because he can speak to that one as well which is related to the paint project that's happening outside of our uh, beautiful city hall building. So uh, I would defer to Mr. Pomerantz just to talk about the deletting process that's happening as part of the, uh, as part of the um, replacement of the uh, Fire escapes. Yeah. Questions? Thank you, Mayor. For Mr. Palmer. Can you want to just explain to us because this was sure, something this discovered was, in this process. Was an unknown uh, as the contractor started to uh, basically cut and torch the existing fire escapes to remove them from the academy. Uh, it was determined that there was some lead paint around the joints of the old, which are the original fire escape steel and metal. So a company has been brought in, they removed the lead just where the escapes needed to be torched and welded to be removed. Uh, that's been done. Um, excavation starts for the new footings and piers on Monday and the fire escapes, the new ones will be up um, by the middle of, uh, actually the second week of, of October in time for the grand open. Any, any questions? Yes. Any question please, Dave. We've had the Academy of Music, there's quite a bit of work that's been done there. Now, we have hired somebody to come in for the fire escapes and so forth. Wasn't there a procedure of knowing that there was a lead problem? Why are we being told now? When the architect Can you just explain sure. that? Because I don't understand it. Um, when the architect um, and the engineer started to do the design, um, we did not do a lead assessment of the existing structures. Uh, it was not felt at the time that there was lead paint. Uh, felt that the painting work that had been done subsequent over the years was not lead-based paint. Uh, it was only when they actually started to torch the joints and the welds to remove the escapes two weeks ago um, that we decided we should do the lead paint test. And it, was, it was a swab test and it showed limited amount of weld, uh, lead paint around some of the joints. <coughs> and we had to remove it properly using EPA regulations. Thank you. Any other questions on this one? <coughs> then can we get a, uh, a motion to approve the finance? I'll make a motion. A second. Second. Right. Any other questions? I just, the only thing I'll add is I think it's on your agenda. <coughs> To request two readings on this, uh, as yeah. so that we can conform to the schedule that's yeah. the outline. Yeah. Uh, then, all in favor in finance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? No. All right. And uh, while while Mr. Pomerantz is here, um, 
uh, out of order on your agenda. Whereas the City Council approved fifteen thousand dollars for making Council Chambers ADA accessible as part of the FY13 capital plan. And whereas the majority of the work was done in house, and there is a balance of funds remaining from the project of $12,939.80. And it's the mayor's intention to reprogram this remaining balance for other capital needs. And whereas there is identified need to provide additional funds for the painting of City Hall due to more excessive work discovered during the repairs, uh, therefore order that $12,939.80 be reprogrammed from the balance of the council chamber's ADA project for the purpose <laughs> of providing additional funds for the painting of City Hall. We got a motion to find it. So, second. Second. Yeah. Okay. Um, question, Councilor. How is the budgeting so off that it was off to the tune of thirteen thousand dollars when fifteen thousand was appropriated? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Well, if I'm reading it right, fifteen thousand was appropriated, and the funds remaining were thirteen thousand, so it only cost two thousand to do. All the work was done by Central Services staff. Well, well that's a good thing, but we didn't know that. Basically, the lobby work. Um, and the only work that's remaining to be done, and we're covering that under the campus-wide security upgrades that we did, is to install the ADA buttons at the vestibule at the front of the building here, as well as Memorial Hall. So by doing all the work in-house, as opposed to farming it out, both the electrical and the carpentry, um, we were able to save that much money. But I'm, I'm just wondering, um, do, do we, we were, when this was first budgeted for 15000 were we unaware that we were going to do it in-house? It was questionable whether I'd have the manpower time to do it, yes. So I had to budget it as if we were going to have to sub it out. Any other questions in, in finance? No? Then all in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Okay. I just want to repeat the, re the similar request second. because we have the painters on the building now uh, to be able to have a second two readings on this. Yeah. <coughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then the the final financial order tonight is upon the recommendation of the mayor, whereas the city has determined it will be cost effective to purchase a folding and inserting machine to streamline mailing of bills and other large mailings conducted by the city's various departments. And whereas there remains $34,522.67 remaining in un unallocated cash capital funds from the FY14 capital plan. I therefore, order that $18,326 be appropriated from unallocated funds remaining in the FY14 cash capital program to provide funds to purchase a folding and inserting machine. We have a motion on this in finance? Make a motion. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, I'm actually Mayor, going to, I'm going to defer this to the finance director on this one. This has been a special project that she's been working on and working with department heads on to research. And uh, so I'm going to have her address this. As part of the mayor's um, FY15 budget, we moved the collector's office to what's called a lockbox service. <coughs> so when residents get their tax bills now, they're getting a inserted envelope, and their envelope has having their check mailed to a lockbox service, which opens all of the um, checks, puts them in the bank for us, and sends us a file. So it's actually cutting down on the time for the collector's office to process the mail, particularly at the you know the key points where tax bills are due quarterly so as we looked at that and and as we got into how this would work with utility billing what we found is that the dpw was had a very small folding inserter and for all of the utility bills they were doing it in in-house down at the dpw but their machine was many many years old and it couldn't handle putting in this new lockbox envelope so now we were going to be left with thousands and thousands of bills having to do them manually by having them put the small envelope in um, so that we could have all the utility bills go to the lockbox, which is the whole point is to have the lockbox kind of cut down on the amount of time it takes to process. So as we got more into this, we realized that many other departments in the city could probably use the kind of machine that we're looking at. It's a machine that actually collates and stuffs envelopes. Some departments in the city send, currently send those out. Um, the city clerk sends the census out to be done, so we pay an outside service to do that. And the tax collector, she sends out all of the tax bills, and they are printed and actually stuffed by this service. 
At the moment, we would, we, at least with the tax bills, we would continue with that outside service, but many of the other things that we do can be done in-house. Um, for instance, the assessors send out the form of list every year, so that will be able to be done um, in-house. Uh, many small departments do mailings of like 600, 500, um, Board of Health, um, uh, the, the mayor's office um, through the license commission does a lot of mailings around that time. Uh, the school department could use it because they do a lot of large mailings. And what this machine, where this machine would be housed is in the central services mail room. And the mail courier, Brenda, <coughs> would be the chief <coughs> operator of this machine. So departments would bring their mailing and she will load it into the machine and it can load it can load several different documents at a time. So you can put you know, one page here, another page here, the small envelope. So it's going to be quite a, a time-saving device for many of the departments. Because other than the collector and the clerk, every other department in the city is doing this manually. So it is a lot of time that could be used, better used elsewhere. So we did get bids um, or quotes uh, on the state bid. So this machine that we're looking at would be purchased off of the state bid. And as I said, we would have one dedicated person running the machine so that it wouldn't be used, you know, it would, it would stay in good condition by having a person who actually understood how to use it. Questions? Absolutely. Yes. Susan, I had talked to Mr. Pomerantz today in regards to how, by us purchasing this machine, how much will the city save money-wise? And he couldn't give me an answer, and he said he was going to try to get a hold of you today. How much? I don't think we have an exact amount at this point, because what it would do is save time on employees. And I didn't get the departments to actually estimate for me how much time it would save. I would eventually like to get some of the larger mailings, like the city census, clerk census. Um, and I. No, I looked up how much the city clerk was doing, and it was several thousand dollars um, a year that she spends to have this outside service do it. And again, this is not something that she came to me looking to do. So, you know, at this time, she isn't slated to have this done, but I think we would urge her to do that because it would be a savings. How old is the other machine? The one at the DPW, I'm not sure. I believe it's at least 15 years old. Um, but I don't know exactly. Well, I think it's a time that we move on. If this machine is going to go ahead and do the folding and whatever needs to be done, then we should do it. Councilor Brown? I was just curious because um, I flash back to every time I've, I've dealt with a photocopy machine where I have to open it up and search for the place where the paper jam. Yeah. I'm sure it's a cartoonish version <laughs> of what it, this actually is. But my question is, um, when we do this, do we also budget money for maintenance of it? Yes. We do, okay. Yes. And that's just separate or? I, I bel I'm not sure entirely, but I believe the first year maintenance is free. And then after that, we would have a maintenance contract. Okay. I don't have the answer for that. I was just curious. That. That's, that's satisfactory to me. And Councilor, do you have a question too? Oh, I please. do. Um, did you say that the tax collector's mailings would not be using the machine? At the moment, the tax co the collector's mailings, that vendor service actually prints the bills for us. So we wouldn't be able to kind of separate, you know, you print the bills and then we'll mail them. Um, but we are going to look into that because ultimately I think it would be a savings for us to just bring it all in. And what this machine ha also has is another add-on feature which would allow us to do our mailings differently and allow us to prepare more of our own mailings in a bulk manner so that we could actually cut down on our postal costs. But we decided we didn't want to go with that yet till we actually got this machine in and saw how many departments were using it and then we could get an estimate of how much we could save if we could do our own postal bulking which would save, ultimately save the city money too. But that's kind of down the road and we decided that we need to get the departments shifted just to getting used to this first. Councilor Adams. Can you clarify for me which specific, exactly which departments will use it? I, the departments that have indicated an interest in using it are recreation, because they do multiple mailings a year to um, the families who have kids at the summer camps, et cetera, and their programs. Uh, Board of Health would use it for um, some of their mailings related to licensing. Uh, the 
uh, clerk's office might use it for the census and we could potentially use it for dog licensing as well um, the Assessors. The assessors would use it for the form of list and all of the mailings for the exemptions because annually they have to do all of that. Um, planning would probably not use it. Uh, school department? School department would use it. They, they have a number of mailings, as you can imagine, that go out a lot, um, particularly their bus pass mailing. That is all done by hand in-house right now. Um, How about DPW fire to the extent that they do mailings? Um, DPW uh, uh, fire and police. Fire could probably use it because they do some permitting as well, like annual permitting. Um, veterans would use it because they do a lot of mailing um, out of of things. I believe the treasurer's office could use it because they have to um, stuff all the um, the checks. Um, be able to use it for payroll stuffing as well because we stuff the payroll checks into window envelopes. So it this is all stuff that's currently done in house by employees. So and do I mean it sounds like the clerk's office, but what about I mean have have we asked which of the departments that'll be using it have employees who are who are strapped for time already so that we know that there's a need in these other departments for it? I most of the departments that came to the meeting indicated they oh Council on Aging also said that they would use it quite a bit. Um, most of the departments came said it would help free up their staff to do other things. Um, I think everybody, it, it, it's not like somebody came to me and says, if I do, if we do this, I can eliminate a staff position. Everybody's response was, if I do this, I can use this person. This will free up an hour a month or two hours a month or something like that. Any other questions for Susan on this one? Yeah. Oh, um, I'm glad to hear about the Council on Aging because that was a question that I was going to ask you. I am hearing that the carrier would be fully responsible of running the machine for the departments. What happens? Is there somebody else as a backup if that person is out ill or is on vacation? You have a backup for the mail. We have uh, three other staff people, uh, one within central services and two who work for the school system as custodians, and they fill in for the mail courier when she's unavailable, vacation, things like that. And they're all trained at the same level. Any other questions? No. Nope. All right, then plenty of all in favor of a positive recommendation? Aye. 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 Opposed? No? Great. Then that being the end of our agenda a motion to adjourn finance move to adjourn second, second. thank you and we're Aye. oh yeah Aye. <laughs> you got both thank you Aye. <laughs> yeah second. oh no we had uh, councilor scare second it and it seems the vote was unanimous uh we are now coming out of recess and back into regular session and get to it on the financial orders the first one is the um, and of course it was a request for two readings on this. Uh, the uh, the appropriation uh, for unallocated funds remaining in FY14 capital program to the Academy of Music fire escape renovation account I'll accept a motion put that on the floor no tip second. second allowed second second <laughs> <laughs> you Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Lips move. It was audible. <laughs> <laughs> I need hosannas. Um, okay. Uh, any further discussion on this? No. Uh, roll call, please. Council Carney. Yes. Council White. Yes. Council Klein. Yes. Council Yes. Council Murphy. Yes. Council Yes. Council Yes. Council Yes. Is there a motion to suspend? Suspend rule? rule 14. Second. Motions are made to suspend rule 14, which requires a second reading. Uh, this will be uh, the second reading in two weeks. This is the second reading tonight. Oh, so all those in favor of suspending rules, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Second reading. Second. second. Okay. The second reading has been made and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Council Yes. Council Klein? Yes. Yes. Council Murphy? Yes. Council Yes. Council Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. It's approved in second reading. Uh, next up is the appropriation from the unallocated funds, uh, $18,326 for a folding and inserting machine. Um, uh, I'll accept a motion. Move uh, okay. approval. Motion's Second. And seconded. Yeah, thank you all. Uh, any further discussion on this miracle contraption? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, roll call, please. Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 There was not a request for two reasons on this one. Hmm. So, okay. We can we can save that wonderment for the next council meeting. So, uh, next up is to reprogram um, municipal building ADA access to city hall painting. Uh, to the tune of twelve thousand nine hundred and thirty-nine dollars and eighty cents. Move for its reading. Second approve. Okay. Motions have made and second. Any further discussion on this reallocation of funds for painting City Hall? Roll call, please. Council Lovars. Yes. Council Murphy. Yes. Council yes. 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 Uh, accept a motion for uh, suspension of rules. Suspend Rule 14. Second. Second. Motion is made and seconded to suspend rules for uh, second reading uh, at the next council meeting. All those in favor of suspending rules? Please. Aye. 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 And any opposed, please say no. Abstentions. All right, I'll accept a motion. Move, move second move. reading. Second it. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Council Murphy. Yes. 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 Next up, we have a series of streets, and this is second reading. Councilor Adams. I move to take four through seventeen as a group and waive reading. Um, <laughs> some of it. <laughs> 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 actually, could I request to take some out of out of the group? You want to separate some? I need to take out uh, Church Street, and I think uh, Councilor okay, Murphy needs to take out. The, uh, yeah. Uh, right. Some refusals. And yes. I'm comfortable that there's enough support for this that I I'll just don't, don't worry about voting for them. I think you're all going to pass them. There's two that I'd have to take out, but it's it's too different from uh, Councilor Carney, so I'll just. I'm staying and I mean it, it's a matter of voting on three other streets. It, 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 exactly. We'll take them all. That. We'll take them all. We I mean just take those. Yeah. Why don't one right. do this and put you on the record as your recusal? So uh, I believe that's uh um for me Church it, Street and you it was um for me it's Awaga and, and Big Rail. Got it. So, so A B and C are out. Okay, fifteen It's thirteen through fifteen 13 can be taken 15. out of the group. 13, yeah. 14, and 15 can be taken out. 4 through 12 and 16, 17. Yes. Yeah, that's very good, actually. <laughs> that, yes. yes. Uh, and why don't you go to the secretary who actually was kind enough to realize that we were going to fumble through this <laughs> like blind mice. You can take. <laughs> so thank you, you for that. Through 12. So, so uh, now yes. the motion is 1 through, uh, uh, four through, four through 12. 4 through 12. 4 through 12. Through 12 without, with a waived reading. Yeah. And there's a second on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Could, could I, though we're waiving the reading, could you just name the streets, the streets for yeah. folks watching at home so they'll know whether there's streets in yeah. there or not? <laughs> and this and this will be this this is the second reading that will actually if they they are approved they will confer them as public ways and that's Prospect Court, Lawn Avenue, Strawberry Hill, Tyler Court, Wilder Place, Carpenter Avenue, Bratton Court, Isabella Street, Edwards Square. Uh, that's where I'm stopping. <laughs> uh, okay. Any further muddled discussion? Uh, did we do this yet? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Several times. We did. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, okay. any further discussion on these? No. Nope. Uh, roll call, please. Yes. Council yes. 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 Four through 12 pass unanimously and are now accepted city streets. Next up, uh, we'll do the next two, if someone puts them on the floor. I'll move 13 and 14 
oh. approving Awaga second. and Baker Hill Road. There's a second. Uh, any further discussion on these? As Council Murphy has just explained, he will be explaining his intent is to recuse himself for potential conflict. Um, okay, roll call, please. Council Chair. Yes. Council yes. Council yes. Council Yes. 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 I abstain. Yes. Uh, that also passes in second reading. Those two are Baker Hill Road and uh, Waga are now city streets. Um, even though you thought they were to begin with. And now up to the last one, number 15. I'll accept a motion to put Church Street. Move, move to approve it. Second. Okay. Uh, once again, it is uh, Council Carney's intent to. Um, abstain as she lives on Church Street. So, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Spencer. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. Abstain. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 That too passes, and all the streets now that we approved. Last meeting are now officially approved and accepted as city streets, and with the promise of more to come, as you all know. Uh, next up is the acceptance of the legislation regarding retired teacher health care costs, and this is the second reading. Move to approve it. A motion's been made and seconded. Would you prefer that I waive reading on this again? Yes. Does anyone remember the issue? Uh, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 That is approved in second reading, and then also uh, in second reading now, an approval of fifteen hundred dollars for the Commission on Disabilities for supplies, events, travel, meetings, printing, and mailing, and including possibly mailing, inserting in folder thingy um, for FY twenty fifteen. I'll accept a motion. Move to approve it. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Uh, okay, that passes second reading and uh, is law. <laughs> the, uh, the, up next, we are moving on to orders and ordinances, and this is, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the, uh, this comes with a positive recommendation from uh, Ed Lou and also from ordinance, and this is the second reading for the zoning map for farms, forests, and rivers. Second. Any, any further discussion on this? Roll call, please. Councilor White. Yes. 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 Now we come up to a little bit of an embarrassment. This may look familiar to you. And it says first reading point, in fact, is actually we did address this issue at the last meeting, but it was never put on the floor. <laughs> it was never, the motion was never made or seconded. So whatever vote we did was just for fun. And, um, now it's entirely up to you. We can do uh, two readings tonight. In that, okay. Technically, yes. we did two readings, but Move first reading. Thank you. Second. Uh, and this is uh, for uh, affordable units. And as you recall, there was a reason that it came without recommendation from Ed Lou that was not a disrecommendation, but the, a process right. issue, and then also positive recommendation from ordinance. Um, so this is for in first reading. Um, Roll call, please. Councilor Clark? Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Move second reading. Second. Motions are made and seconded for second reading. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 
Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. The next, you want to refer them all as a group? Yes. Yeah, because they're all going. Uh, but it's the same group, group, ordinance. Some of them. Yep. One's going to the planning board. Yes, two uh, Number three. five is going to the planning board. Ditto was six and ditto was seven, but the first three are only ordinance. Right. So pick those as a group. I'm sorry? For, um, number seven, um, I don't think it should go to the planning board. I think it should go to the Transportation Parking Commission. All right, well, let's separate number seven. Uh, Councilor Adams, what was the group you wanted to move? Oh, three through seven. Well, three through six then. Three through six? Uh, the, well, okay, number three, the recommendations are for the ordinance, same with four, same with, but five also includes a well, I, mean, I, I just, they're all referrals, so I'm just yeah. moving to refer them as a group, despite the fact they may not go to all the exact same places. As the recommended referrals, got it. Yes, recommended. Got it. Uh, is there a second? Second. Second. Okay, uh, discussion on the referrals. So everyone's comfortable with the recommenda recommended referrals that are stated here. Uh, all those in favor of those referrals, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, and that puts us at number seven, which is violations and penalties. And I'll accept a motion I, for. I move to refer to ordinance and the Transportation and Parking Commission. Second. Second. Well, also planning, right? I mean, well, that's and, what and I'm wondering. You're deleting. Why, why not? I, I don't believe it should go to planning. I think that's a typo. So that's deleted. Yeah. It's transportation related. Yeah. Okay. okay. So. This is a referral to ordinance and to TPC, transportation. So, um, any further discussion on the referral? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 <coughs> Abstentions. Ladies and gentlemen, I have no updates for you. And uh, are there any committee chairs that have any updates? Uh, any information requests? Any new business? Oh, Lord. Motion to adjourn. to adjourn. Second. <laughs> Motions made to adjourn and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you all very much and welcome back. <laughs>